you know, we, we all play for each other. Uh, you know, one through 18, we have in our roster, we all play for each other. Um, you know, we love each other, and, you know, we, we got three seniors, and, you know, we uh, wanted to leave on a state championship, so. Hey, have fun at Ohio State next year, but in the meantime, have a lot of fun tonight and tomorrow enjoying this. I will. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Congrats. <laughs> I started playing uh, basketball around seven, eight years old. I started playing basketball when I was six years old. Uh, I started playing like real organized basketball when I was in second grade. Um, it was my dad. My dad, he played basketball his whole life. So we kind of born into it, me and my brothers. Honestly, I would say my dad. Um, like when I was like five, six, we moved to Charlotte for a year. And me and my dad would just play like one-on-one -on -one outside a lot. And I don't know, I just kind of start to like, like basketball more. Kind of just fell in love with it. I liked, I was always competitive growing up, so I just enjoyed everything and playing with my brother and stuff, so. To be honest with you, I didn't even know where Tatino Grace was when I got called about the job. Um, so Mike called me, um, it was a referral, the job was open. Um, I came and met with them, loved the school. Um, called my wife and said like, there's no way I can do this. And she asked me like, when are you gonna start? And um, so it was, uh, I have an affinity for private schools. You know, I think the, the structure, uh, the religious component, uh, I think there's a more intimate setting in the classroom, in the hallways and administration. And um, so I always knew in the back of my head, I wanted to coach at a private school, but um, you know, I, I, I definitely didn't think it was gonna be a TG. As Tutino Grace wins its first section championship in boys basketball since 2006, 48-44 Eagles is the final. In Class 3A, the only team to beat Park Center this season, Tutino Grace took aim at their first championship in boys basketball. Tutino Grace wins 50-44 to to match the Eagles girls championship last week. You know, I probably take for granted the fact that like, we believe that based on what we do every day, we're supposed to win. Um, and I don't think that's true in every program. You know, I think a lot, of, a lot of people go out and they work hard and they say all the right stuff, but when the chips are on the table, I don't think they really believe that they can win. Um, we believe that we're the best team on the floor every time we go out to play because of the way we prepare every day and the, the accountability that we have to each other. Um, and that belief is genuine. And, I, and I, I, the, the longer I go in this, the more I realize how unique it is that we actually believe we're going to win every time we set foot on the floor. We practice very hard, harder than any other team. Like, I can say that for a fact. We practice harder uh, probably than we should. Um, but uh, it, it's all, like I said earlier, it was like the sacrifices you have to make. So it, it, there was no really, pr like, real pressure to me, at least, because uh, we just kind of knew we had, to, we had something to get. Well, it was, I mean, really a, a special deal, right? Like, um, for our school, that was the first state championship in boys basketball in 50 years. Um, in, in a basketball program that over those 50 years has been really a pretty solid program. Um, and, and so that, the big picture was really neat. Um, but, but you kind of zone in a little bit on, on a lot of those kids that you know, show up here as ninth graders and, and you know, Coach Carroll's got a plan and, and it's not a quick plan, it's a big plan, you know, um, and to see all of the pieces come together when, when you make a plan and the plan works because so many times it, it doesn't, right? There's one champion. And so most of the time the plan doesn't work perfectly. You know, it can work pretty well and, and you can go deep, but, but to walk away on top, that takes a lot of special things to happen. I, w I would say this, me and my team, teammates always say this, we always say that our first one is better than the second one just because it was our first time going to state. 
um, it was TG's first time winning in basketball state. So, you know, girls won that year too. So it wasn't just big for us, it was big for the whole TG community. Year two, I was coming in more confident because we've been there and everything. And with that confidence, we kind of relapsed to what we did last year, which we came in a little too overconfident. And so when we started getting like hit in the face with these teams and stuff, it really like had us take a step back and we had to try a lot of things to see what we needed to fix. The pressure for me honestly probably felt like it was a little bit less this year than last year. I think anytime you're doing something the first time, um, as cool as it is to go back to back and as unique as that is, and only a handful of teams have done that. Um, you know, last year's team was the first team in school history to win a state championship. Um, and so I think getting that off of our shoulders to begin with, um, and I think we had so much returning and those guys who had been all the way through it, we knew that regardless of, you know, ups or downs over the course of the season, I think we knew that these seniors would have the resolve at the end of the year where if they had to call on experience, they'd, they'd be prepared to. And it's not, I don't even think it's like the state championship that's very memorable. It's just like all the work that you put in during the season that just makes everything just feel so much better at the end. Like all the times where you just like, you run, you do extra sprints, all the times where like, we're complaining in the locker room how the season is really hard right now and we're losing games that we're supposed to be, or like we're not supposed to be losing. Just everything just like during the season that just pays off at the end just makes winning the state championship feel 10 times better. Take a look at the end of the game here. We played a great opponent. De La Chelle, what, what a storied history. What a great basketball school. They had some beautiful players on that team, and it was a seesaw battle going back and forth. And at the end of the game, though, we pulled away, didn't we, a little bit? Not, not, not dramatically, but we pulled away. And why? I think we were so incredibly prepared for that moment. And somehow our, our guys were hitting the shots, and uh, they were going in, and we were playing good defense, and we were playing as a team. We were sharing the ball. We were sharing the credit. Uh, the kid, kids on the bench were really excited for the success of the team. And when they came up a little short during those moments, they were right there to pick them up. All of that has to do with being a good team and a good teammate. That doesn't just happen. And I think you learn by having the highs and the lows. And you've got to learn from your mistakes. We have to be on our grind play during the season to be eligible. And usually, like, practices can go to, like, around 6, and you're getting home at 6. You got to eat something, and then you got to finish your homework, and you're doing it all again the next day. So it's just the routine and the sacrifices that you're going through every single day. I mean, obviously, a lot of credit goes to Coach Nick and the coaching staff, but, you know, I just think the way that, you know, we, we care for each other off the court, like, it's kind of like a brotherhood, to be honest. Um, you know, we all care for each other. We hang out all the time. We're around each other all the time, so... I think that just translated onto the court. On the road trips, even though we lost, I mean, you were on the road trips too, so you could account to this, but I feel like we bonded a lot on the road trips. Just, you know, time off the court in a hotel, whatever it was, going out to eat. So I think that's, that's what built our chemistry, so. There's some teams who I see like, they'll get along on the court and, you know, they run their plays or whatever, but off the court, like they don't even speak to each other. Like we can go and like lose a game or like go and like run the whole practice and go like in the locker room and joke about it as a team or just like, just come together. You know, we have times where one may drift off, but the thing about us, like if one drifts off, we'll pull them back in. A Twin Cities family looking for answers as to why their son's life was taken. 17 year old Sekoa Seiko was shot and killed in Brooklyn Park on Friday night. Investigators say that they are not getting a lot of cooperation from witnesses in this case. I've always had love for the game, but you know, obviously throughout life, you know, stuff happens, you, you know, different situations. Um, I lost I lost a friend back in November, so I kind of play play for him. So, um, you know, just, just people who aren't here kind of play for them, um, that fuels me, motivates me. Well, I feel like that's what made this year so special because that was like the weekend before the basketball season started. And so we're coming into tryouts and everyone's just not feeling the best. And so we're kind of, we kind of like as a team or, you know, the people who knew him kind of wanted to come together and like, be like, all right, bro, like, let's do this for Sioka. Let's do everything in our power to do it for him because he can't do it no more. So just putting life in a different perspective, I feel like it changed everyone and realized how precious life is. 
and not taking anything for granted. Uh, special motivation definitely be my brother SK passing away. Um, for me, London, Jaden, and Tayson, just, and even you, Amana, just like all of us knowing him and knowing like how good of a kid he was and how hard he went on the court, it kind of just motivated. And like, that's kind of like in all my social media stuff and like even like talking to my brothers off the court, just saying like we're balling for SK. That definitely pushed us a lot more this year. Definitely, for sure. I say keep going, uh, don't give up. You know, it's gonna be hard, hard times, but um, you know, whatever you do, you gotta push through. You gotta find some, something to keep you going. You need moments where you lose, where you go home and you cry or you're mad about something. You need those like downhill moments to go up. Be calm through those down moments. Like don't give up, just stick with it because we know how the end results happen. So before our first game of the season, uh, I took out one of our state championship medals and I had the guys pass it around the room and I asked them like, what does this make you think of? And you know, they said, well, throwing up the ball at the end of the state championship and being in Williams in the locker room and uh, winning the section finals at Columbia Heights. And they all said all these, these high moments. And for me, um, and it's not to be negative or cryptic, but what comes out for me is like all the, all the challenges, like all the, all the losses, all the long road trips, the tough turnarounds, the achy bodies, the playing through sickness. Um, and so honestly, a lot of, like, I, I remember like being in the locker room after we just lost to Pewaukee, like, how are we going to do this? Like, who, who's it going to come from? Like, what do we need to change? What do we need to shift? And going from that place to, you know, seven weeks later, uh, you know, cutting down the net at the state finals is like, how, like, how did, how did we do this? That's Tyler Wagner with it. Back to Chapman. He wants to clear that out a little bit. He's got room on the baseline. A quick jumper, quick release, and beautiful soft touch. Maybe below the pace that they play right now, but so far, De La Salle's been able to dictate that tempo. Humphreys, yep. That and the crowd <laughs> loves it. Their team back on top. The Eagle faithful. Looking around the gym and you see like, like it's super packed. Everyone's standing on their feet. It, for me, it doesn't make me nervous. It just excites me. It's just like, like, let's go win it. And um, when we come out, like it gets, all my nerves are like, they kind of drop as soon as I get in the game. But like seeing how many people were there, it was cool to see that like, this was gonna go in the history books. Johnson, spin move, stop, pop, got it. Ooh. Off in a big way with a three. Humphrey, same spot, same result. Ooh. Good free throw shooters here, but he's just gonna take it in and just lay it in. That's trying to drive. Nothing there. Let's, oh, there's a pass to Bath, and he'll just take that downtown. Kick, corner three, shot, good. Wow, needed it. Moses just let that fly with not a whole lot of arch. He knew he had it. 16.7. They're not going to let Whitlock come up all by himself. Make him work it. Three-pointer on the way. And all he does is just put it right down. His confidence. You want the guy that wants the shot. And he did. And he nails it. Now we're at one. At halftime, it was a 20 to 19 game. So we're right back to where we were when they went in the locker room the first time. What a comeback. I mean, well, we, we were up most of the game. Um, and then we, I think we went on a run towards the end of the game. I hit a few free throws. I don't know. I, a lot was going through my head when I was guarding this year. What was running through my mind was like, I can't let him score. Um, then Nas came down, hit that shot. But when he hit that shot, it was just like, it was, it was draining. But in a game like that, like we were all just like, next one. Okay, next one. You make a turnover, next one. You know, big time players made big time shots, but you know, uh, after that, hit two, I think two, three more free throws, and you know, we practice free throws in practice every day after we run. We practice free throws because uh, Coach Nick always says free throws win games, so you know, it paid off in the end. Coach Carroll looking on, trying to repeat the state champs, and he got it. Huge free throw right there. 
Higgins to Whitlock. He'll go to the half stripe, pop it up. The shot is up. And we have a back to back state championship for Tatino Grace in a tense, exciting game here at Target Center. Final 50 to 46 over De La Salle. It was a tremendous team effort. The Eagles played a great game for a full 36 minutes. Their stars shine bright. It was probably one of the most indescribable moments that um, I could ever feel or ever like go through. It's the energy is off the charts. The everybody's just happy. Like you just feel a sense of relief of like from the game from the first day of practice like we had that goal coming in that we were going to be state champs and I feel like it wasn't just known by us but it known by everybody else too so trying to live up to the hype or to what everybody else was uh, expecting us to do um, feeling that and like finally getting it done it was a big uh, it was a big accomplishment. You know, we're always looking at things like there's some way to there's some way to beat this team. Man, like I can tell you, the state finals, there could be a plane crash in the stands. I would have no idea. Like, I, like we're so focused on what's going on on the floor. Um, and I remember looking up when Isaiah got fouled, Nas missed the three. Isaiah got fouled with what are two seconds left or whatever it was. And I turned around and looked up. The gym could have been empty, or there could have been a million people in there. Like I, we, we wouldn't have noticed. Like we're just so locked into these guys and trying to help them be successful. Yeah, and these guys could have like all gone to separate schools and been the star player at every single school, but the sacrifices that some of them have made um, to be willing to come here and be part of something bigger than themselves has been like really, really special to see and watching these guys grow. Like some guys could go and average 20 to 25 points a game at any school around the city, chose to come here and average a little bit less, play with some better, better competition or better, better players in general and get themselves ready for college. I think there's a lot of really good coaches out there. It's, it's definitely not it's definitely not me. I think a lot of coaches are saying the same messages. I think you have to have the right people buy into that narrative. Um, and I think over the course of time, this, this group of seniors, and it's not necessarily all the high producing players that did it. You have guys like London, you have guys like Jaden Livingston, you have guys like Rikishi Lee, who really bought into that narrative you know, from the jump regardless of what their role is going to be. And then obviously you have guys like Taysen, Tommy, and Patrick who, you know, on game nights were, were doing more of the production. But uh, I think over the time, over time, those guys really just bought into that. A lot of people don't, from like outside looking in, a lot of people don't know, but London really, like we had some tough times during our season. London really kept our team together. Um, he kept everyone's head on straight. So, you know, he was kind of like the vocal leader in our locker room. Um, this past year, so you know he definitely meant a lot to our team. But I think that the London James kind of kid, the kid that's not going to get a lot, on, a lot of playing time, and I wish I wish he would. Right? You, you want those kids to get on the court too, but I think he knows his role, and that role is to make the team better, and he makes the team better by his leadership, his work ethic, how he uses his words to motivate, but really it's it's modeling behavior. Coming in every day knowing that you're like you're probably not gonna play in the game and he's still being a great leader, he's still keeping a smile on your face, he's still going hard in practice. Like that's just like for, like that's something that would be hard for me to do. So seeing him do it, it's like, bro, it's all props to him, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like high school sports definitely helps like a ton in providing that like mental maturity especially for like kids these days because um it kind of shows that the work you put in is the work you're going to get out and so that's like a life lesson with most of life too so um learning that at a young age and then being able to apply that through your life is important you, you get to control the process you don't get to control the end or the results all the time um, and so kind of managing those expectations and going, okay, I, I know that's your goals and all that, but let's talk about how we're going to get there. I think it's just um, us really wanting what's best for each other. I feel like, especially towards the end of the season or like even in like any of the section games, like you see anyone scoring, everyone on the bench is getting up happy and everyone just generally wanting 
the person next to them to succeed? Um, I mean, when I came in as a freshman, Coach Nick always said, he said he's going to, uh, by the time I leave here, I'm going to be prepared for the next level. So, you know, he took that, um, you know, he kept his word. We watched film every day after practice, before practice. Um, you know, we lift as a team, we eat as a team. You know, two hour practices, usually what, what it is in college too. So, you know, he'll open the gym for us. Um, as well, so you know, he always he just kept his word, and he said he's gonna have us prepared by the time we leave. It definitely feels surreal, especially like how close it's getting. Um, but I feel like I'm at the point in my life where I'm ready for the new journey. Um, like high school has taught me a lot, and it's built me to be the man that I'm about to become when I go off to college. Um, but. I think I'm ready. This was a special four years of my life, um, you know, coming in as a teenager, leaving as an adult. So, you know, a special four years, but you know, I'm excited for what comes next. Just that we could never pay them back for the time and energy that they put into the program and that there's, there's not words to express. Um, there's not a gesture that could be made. Um, fortunately for them, like they, they get to have two graduating years sitting on a state tournament banner in the rafters for the rest of their lives that they can go back to and call back on those memories. But um, we put those guys through everything you could possibly get put through as a high school athlete. And for those guys that are going on to play in college after, you know, they'll be able to call back on those experiences and say, I've, I've been through similar things. And for those guys who aren't, whatever takes basketball's place, uh, they're going to be able to take those struggles and those challenges and like that accountability and the adversity and the camaraderie and all those things and have as much success as they choose to have and whatever you know they jump into and i would say just the, the level of gratitude and um, indebtedness that we have to those guys for believing us and buying in and trusting you know we, we, we could never pay them back for it the, these memories like life has a has a really unique way of like just kind of like beating you into submission a little bit, like where it tells you kind of like stay stay within the lines and you know kind of do the status quo and um, get your paycheck and like just like don't take risks. And these guys have have built something and been a part of something where um, there's a huge element of risk taking. Like if you say like, we're gonna try to win a state championship and we're gonna do everything we can possibly do. Like we're gonna try to achieve whatever it is. We're gonna try to achieve it at the highest level. Well, what if you don't? Like what if I do all that work and I don't? I think like I have definitely come to appreciate and realize, you know, obviously I totally believe with my entire heart, we're gonna win a bunch more of these. Um, but there will be a time when we don't. And yes, the emotion and the feeling like right after the game will be, painful um, but the memories created through that process um, they're gonna parallel the memories that we have when we do win you know and um, I just I really think pursuing things at the highest possible level like whatever walk of life you're in whether you're podcasting or doing videography or you know trying to win championships or whatever it is um, that journey is where the best stuff comes you know, and, and the, the results are just kind of a byproduct of it.